on paper, this pay-per-view is a one-match card. But was it? Was it any good? Let's find out. gentlemen welcome to this is the first episode of season six believe it or not of 10 years ago is your favorite series and it's mine oh yes it is it's 2005 and the WWE despite not learning anything from the great American bash and taboo Tuesday in 2004 decided to give us another additional pay-per-view here we go it's New Year's Revolution because the rumble in January just isn't enough of course it being January it means we're getting three episodes of 10 years ago this month because of course I'll also be doing TNA Final Resolution 2005 it's January the 9th, 2005, and we are live in a new venue for WWE as we go overseas to Puerto Rico to the Jose Miguel Ag Agrilot, I hope that's right, Jose Mag Miguel Agrilot Coliseo de Puerto Rico in Sweden. No, wait, we're in Puerto Rico. That's an odd name. If you're wondering, that guy, right, is, is one of Puerto Rico's favourite comedians. He'd passed away just in 2004. They decided instead of having a corporation name it, they said they were going to name it after one of their favourite entertainers. Now, this, in over here in Blighty, for, uh, for those of my British fans, this would be the equivalent of calling the Manchester Evening News Arena in, in Manchester the Bruce Forsyth Arena, wouldn't it? It'd be the Bruce Forsyth Arena of England. That's the equivalent name, isn't it? Isn't that crazy? We are live at the Bruce Forsyth Arena for WWE New Year's Revolution. Think about it. 16, sorry, 15,674 rabbit, and they are fans are on hand to see a new champion crowned. We'll talk about that more in the main event. The Hurricane and Rosie defeated La Resistance in the dark match, which I'm, again, as always, gutted about missing. So, our opening contest tonight is Eugene and William Regal defeating Christian and Tyson Tomko in an alright opener to retain the Tag Team Championships. Go on, had you forgotten that they won the championships? Because, oh, I had. What happens at the end of this match may be the reason for that, but I, re I went to a Raw show in November over here in England, and I remember Eugene and William, William Regal winning the belts that night, but Bischoff overturned it, so it didn't count, so that must have happened quite recently. So Eugene is dressed as Hogan, which is nice, a lovely little touch, is Regal telling Eugene to hold on to the tag rope in the corner. We like that one a lot. Christian and Regal go back and forth with some nice stuff. The crowd roar when Eugene tags in, and he does his Hulk impressions, but Chris Christian is evil, so he locks on a side head lock. Went to rest on my balls, on the back of my feet, then I almost fell over, aren't I? And knob. Eugene channels his inner junkyard dog, pissing on Christian. Not actually pissing, obviously, but that makes Christian mad. So he tags in Tonko, who now has a truly massive heel beard, and it really suits him. He does one move and tags Christian back out. Is there dissension between Christian and Tonko? Eugene proves he's not as stupid as it obviously looks by hiding under the ring. Christian and Tonko go to follow, but Christian tells Tonko to go to the other side. And Christian gets in the ring, and instead of Eugene coming out to the other side, he comes out behind him, rolls him up. Ha, that gets two. He hits an airplane spin, but walks into a black hole slam from Tonko that the referee doesn't see. Tonko dominates Eugene until he hulks up, quite literally, because he's dressed as Hulk Hogan, of course. Hooray! <laughs> but all he does is hit a back body drop and then get the hard tag to Regal, who cleans house until he has beats from Tonko. So now Regal is your new face in peril, getting his now traditional bloody nose. Quick tags, distracting the referee, and the usual goodness as the heels work over Regal, but with added crowd noise, because... Holy shit, this crowd are fucking hot. They're really hot for everything. It's great. Christian pulls Eugene off the apron while Regal looks like he's about to get a tag. I fucking love that. Regal stretch over for the tag. Christian doesn't bother getting Regal. He goes around to Eugene, grabs him legs, and pulls him off the apron. So when Regal actually does the dive for the tag, there's no one there for it. I like that. That's good. Regal looks a mess. He's covered in blood. He's got because his nose is bleeding. It's all bottom of his mouth. He looks like he's been going down on a woman who's like, never mind, never mind. Um, 
He could, yeah, he, he's obviously been knocked about a bit because he took crawls to, to the wrong corner to get the tag. When he eventually gets the hot tag to Eugene, he get, you know, he comes in, he's all fired up, he's all rah! But then, but then, and this is the bit that everyone knows this match for, he hits a drop kick, lands badly, and he ruptures his patella in his left leg. Match comes to a crunching stop. As you see, Regal's on the outside because he's been getting beat. So you've got the three men all talking to each other. Eugene's clearly saying, look, I'm hurt. I'm going to have to... Because you know, if they know for the booked finish, um, Eugene and Regal have got to win. But think about it. Eugene's the one who's going to be doing the pin and he can't stand up. So he gets into a position where he's essentially hopping on one leg and rolls up Tomko. And Tom, it's one of those times... It's like the, um, it's like the, the, the SummerSlam uh, 97 moment. It's that, look, you can see that Owen could quite literally kick out if he wanted to, but the booking says that he doesn't. Tomko's the same here. It's just a, it's the weakest roll up you'll see in, in years. And Tomko could quite easily lift or quite easily lift and doesn't because that's the one finish. Um Ah, it's such a shame because I was really enjoying this match. It was so much better than I was expecting. The crowd noise really, really helped this one. It had a decent length because it went 12 minutes. The heels were being heels. They were being bastards to get you behind the fucking baby faces. Uh, the crowd loving it, but yeah. Unfortunately, that finish means that it's not as good as it could have been. Eugene won't wrestle again for six months. We'll see him from time to time, like at WrestleMania, where he'll get beat by um, Hussan and, and Divari. But other than that, yeah, not going to see this guy wrestle for a long, long time. But it's a shame. Match was good. We see Christy Hemi walking to the beach, which is nice. But then Tomko and Christian are backstage, and they run into Edge. Christian's vexed. Like, last time you, uh, you know, Edge has got an idea. I need you to trust me. And Christian's like, well, last time I trusted you, you jumped me from behind. But then it's like, no, I've got an idea. So you can be the world champion. And Christian's like, ooh, intrigued I am. Uh, then... Trish tries defeating Lita in a poor match to win at the Women's Championship. These two have been feuding for months, as we know. They fought at Survivor Series, where Lita got disqualified by using a steel chair. Breaking Trish's nose, says so she had to wear a mask, and Trish for revenge. And I will get my revenge, and I'll put my championship on the line. It's one of those... All right, okay. Um, Lita won the belt in the main event on Raw, which a lot of people oddly called the best women's matches they've ever seen. It was... All right in places, but of course it had that suicide dive where Lita decided to take a, try, a suicide dive on her chin and came in bent and it was scary. It's a true scary. They showed it as part of a Hall of Fame package last year. So, so stupid. Anyway, if anyone's wondering, right, I consider Alundra Blaze versus Bull Nakano from SummerSlam 1994 and Trish versus Steph from No Way Out 2001 as the best women's matches in the WWF. This, you know, that one on Raw wasn't, and this one sure as fuck isn't. Evil Trish is dressed in black. She's so fucking sexy, it's frightening. Crowd of hot for Lita. Trish is thrown to the outside, where Lita hits a Thez press off the apron and blows out her left knee. And you're going, she does the exact same injury. That Eugene did. And you're just going, how is this possible? Two matches in, two injuries. Evil Trish is evil. So she starts booting the injured knee. Um, Lisa tries to go for a DDT and she can't even stand up. She can't hold Trish in place. Now think about it, it's a headlock. It's a front face lock. It's nothing. She can't even, she can't put the weight on the left leg at all. She crumples down. When she eventually staggers back up, Trish does it right. Hitting the chip kick really hard in the face to get the one, two, three in about three minutes. 3.46 I've got written down here. Um, and that was that. Obviously, I, I, you can't rate it any more than the dud because one move happens and then the injury happens. So you're going, right, okay, that, that's that, I'm afraid. It almost it sounds like I'm being heartless, but there's nothing else I can do. I can't rate it any higher, kind of, because they wouldn't really, you, know, you know, you could, if you wanted to give it half a star, for Lisa not just going, right, I can't wrestle, I've, I've got, you know, and she did try her hardest to continue, but when it was obvious that she couldn't stand, they went to the finish. Does anyone know, if you can let me know in the comments, this would be great, does anyone know who was originally scheduled to win this match? Because I haven't got a clue. In the back, Jericho is ready for his match which is at least an hour away. Don't know why he's sat already already, but whatever. Then Maria was at the pool, which is nice. And then Bischoff and Edge talk. Edge wants out of the chamber match because Shawn Michaels is the guest referee and he knows, Edge knows he won't get a fair shot. So why not put Christian in there instead? Christian, win, and it's not just if Christian wins, Edge says, whoever wins the match can face me tomorrow night for the championship. Happy days. Um... Then Bischoff is, just says no, not in the slightest. I don't, not having none of that. So Edge gets vexed, and then Edge walks into Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels says that he will be a fair referee tonight, but if anyone is physical with him, he will retaliate. Next, 
all downhill from here, I'm afraid. Um, Shelton Benjamin defeating Maven in a rubbish match to retain the Intercontinental Championship. So, man, you forget that Benjamin has held this belt for months at this point, hasn't he? You actually forgot, or forgot, how long Benjamin held the championship for, don't you? Maven beats Shelton in a six-man, so is normal contended by default or something like that. So the fans lay into Maven with some Spanish chants, right? So he bails to the outside and gets on the mic. He tells the referee not to count him out because I've got something to say. And the referee's an obliging guy and doesn't. If I was the ref, I would have counted him. But yeah, Maven cuts this promo that goes on and on and on and fucking on. Um, you know, he, he doesn't understand what the crowd are saying. He can't concentrate on his match while they're chanting. Rips the crowd in Spanish, which gets a big, big boo. He then bails. I don't want to, I don't want to do this. We'll fight in America, he bails. So the referee then starts counting. One of those, uh. Referee gets to nine. Maven changes his mind, runs to the ring, gets rolled up for one, two, three. You go in. This was fucking stupid. This was really stupid. But this was the last pay-per-view I ever watched with my father-in-law. And he laughed at that. So it, I suppose it was all right. It, you know, watching it the second time, because it's only the second time I've ever watched this pay-per-view. Watching this, watching this match the second time, you're going, ugh. But I suppose on the night, it might have raised a smile. Didn't with me, though. Gets minus one. And, no, sorry, because there's more. Because then, Ben might, may even get to the mic and says, I wasn't ready. And that doesn't count. And he goads him. And Benjamin's going, look, I've just fucking beaten you. Balls, you. I'm not, I'm not doing it now. Fuck off if you want to fight, we'll do it again another time. And basically Maven cuts a promo and promo, 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 where he says he hasn't got any balls. So that's what it takes. Maven comes in, sorry, Benjamin comes in, one T-bone suplex later, one, two, three. And again, it makes you laugh, but it's not good. It's one of those, this was such a waste of time. And let me, let me tell you why. If you start going, but you, it made you laugh, why is it? It goes like this. No one looks good here. Maven comes across as a jobber who can't back up his words, right? And Benjamin's just beating a jabber who can't back up his words, so it means nothing. Muhammad Hassan cuts a rubbish promo. Rubbish. It's shouty, it's generic, and he fluffs his lines because he calls the pay for you New Year's resolution, which is good of him. Muhammad Hassan defeating Jerry Lawler in a piss poor match. Mark Kupani here plays Muhammad Hassan, he's an Arab American who is vexed by the way that men like him are treated after the 9 11 attacks by Americans. You can understand that, believe it or not, you can. It's just one of those times where it's like, and why are you using wrestling to get that done? It's like Jeff Jarrett conquering the music world by going through wrestling first. Just, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I never understand that. I'm going to use wrestling as a stepping stone. You can use it as a stepping stone to acting, and that makes sense. Anything else doesn't ever make sense. Anyway, he has a manager, a slash translator called Davari with him, and they faced Jim Ross and King last week on Raw in a debate, which you know how it goes. If you're, an, if you're a British person watching this, watching it, you're just going, ugh, come on. Because as a Brit, I side with the heel because it's, everything he's saying is right and of course jim ross has only got the look if you don't like america don't live here shit it's like but i grew up here i live here i'm an arab american i was born in america it's one of those tricky ones where again the whole world wrestling entertainment thing just doesn't come into it it's america damn it you know it's fucking shit uh, naturally, the debate turned physical, so we have this match. The first thing we should mention here is that Jim Ross is in King's Corner. So instead of having, say, Coach come out and do the commentary, fuck, Todd Grisham do it. No, we have silence. This does not help this match in any way. Lola hits a body slam on Hassan. Hassan says, huh, a body slam? You want to do a body slam, do you? I'll show you a body slam. So he proceeds to do a body slam. Five of them. Five straight body slams. Does a body slam. Bam. And then gets up and does a body slam. Bam. Jerry Lawler gets up. Body slam. Bam. I I can do this all day. Body slam. <laughs> Jerry Lawler gets up. <laughs> it's like, I actually don't. Wait, I know other moves. Watch this. Puts on a camel clutch. Because I'm an Arab, so I've got to. It's just generic camel clutch. Make him humble. And then Jerry Lawler gets out of the camel clutch. So Hassan puts on another one. <laughs> so I am Arab. I do camel clutches. That's what we do. <laughs> this one lasts a full minute, right? And guess what Hassan does next? No, it's not a body slam. It's another camel clutch third one. Yeah! Wrenching it back. And guess what this crowd, who have been rabid for everything so far, guess what they do? And you've got it in one. They sent a big, boring chant, and it's quite entertaining. 
<sighs> Where are we? Anyway, Lawler, to his credit, somehow manages to get the crowd fired up and he breaks the hold. But Hosan gets a shit looking netbreaker, so they give up again and go back to the boring chant. These fans want to get behind Lawler, that they couldn't give a shit about Hosan at all. Fact. Anyway, Lola hulks up and the crowd love it. He gets a drop kick and a fist drop off Brett's rope and the cover gets two. A fucking superb DDT gives this match an extra half star that it doesn't deserve because it's so nice and it may be the best wrestling move I've ever seen Jerry Lawler do and that's including his power drivers. It's so crisp, so fast and the way that fucking Hassan comes down on his forehead, oh, gold. It's the only good thing in this match, I promise you. But not the win is Davari puts the foot on the ropes. King chases until Jari runs into JR, who wants some. All this distraction leaves Lola wide open to a downward spiral from Husan, who gets the win to silence at 10 minutes and 51 seconds. The crowd so badly wanted to cheer this. They wanted to get behind Lola. They couldn't give a fucking shit about Hassan, and Hassan didn't help himself with his four moves that he knows. He knows how to do a boy slam and a camel clutch and Vaguely knows what a net breaker is and his finishes are down the spiral. That's all he's got. Fuck this guy. Fuck this character. Does that make sense? The endless camel clutch was too boring. Killed the crowd each time. Needed commentary. He had Todd Gresham in the back and you had Coach in the back. One of them do commentary. Please. It needed it. Really badly. So we'll go. We'll give it, should we give it quarter of a star for the match, quarter of a star for the crowd, half a star for that fucking DD. Now, nah. quarter of a match, quarter of a star for the match. Quarter of a star for that DD, half a star for the crowd. One star! That's what it's getting, and that's been very nice. I would be amazed if anyone else rated this one star. It'd be, it'd be lower, surely. If it is higher, let me know. You know. There are a lot of people who have a thing about disagreeing with me. About, you know, I can't believe you rated it this. If that's how you feel, say. Say why. I think you underrated this, Matt, this show. It's not helpful, is it? Tell me why. Why is he? I think Hassan was an amazing character. And I think you're being harsh to him for going and saying you can only have to do four moves. Say so. It helps. It really does constructive criticism at the end of the day, isn't it? it I can learn from it. Saying, I thought you underrated this paper. What do you want to do? You can review it again and go, right, oh, yeah, that guy was right because... Just a thought. <sighs> In the back, Orton interrupts Batista and reminds him that helping Trump Hunter, helping Triple H in an elimination chamber match, did his career no favours. It's one of those, uh, you helped him in the Summer Sun one, 2003, and you got eliminated from Evolution a year later, so no, <laughs> that doesn't quite work. Anyway, Orton asks Batista, are you going to kick his ass or kiss it? It's a great line. Batista replies, well, you stop worrying about what I'm going to do to Triple H and start worrying about what I'm going to do to you. Should have said, what I'm wor we, should, we should be worrying about what I'm going to do to your ass. That would have been gold, wouldn't it? You should be worrying about what I'm going to do to your ass. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Big Dave shouts that if he gets a chance, he'll take the title. He will. So, you know, if he gets a chance to take the title, he will. Good stuff. Slow burn. Fucking great. It really is. Watching it back a decade later, this storyline with Batista turning on Triple H is so good. It's so slow. And it's so subtle. And it's wonderful. It's really, really good. Ah. Uh. And in fact, I've written on my notes here, this, this slow face turn has been so expertly booked to this point that you're almost waiting for them to fuck it up. <laughs> which they do then a Wrestlemania recall it's Shawn Michaels entrance and win from Wrestlemania 12 get the fuck out of my ring oh, one of the most overrated matches there's ever been <laughs> I'll do it one day out come coach to join Jim Ross on commentary this makes no sense why couldn't you have coach do the match oh stupid uh, Jim Ross goes, makes me smile with a great lie which is it goes from bad to worse sometimes and I've had a really bad week <laughs> I've actually written that down in one of my little you know, quotes. If I ever do commentary again, that's something that I will be you know, adding. I was having that one for definite. Kane defeating Gene Snitsky. Um, match. This is a rematch from Taboo Tuesday a few months ago, as we all know. And Kane is now a face. So Kane starts with a slam, an elbow drop, and a leg drop. A big uppercut in the corner, then a power slam, that gets two. The crowd are hot for Kane, but silent between moves. One of those sort of matches basically means that they don't give a fuck about Snitsky. Snitsky comes back to the sidewalk slam, and then removes some mats from the ringside. He wants a power bomb on the steel concrete, but gets back dropped onto the concrete steel, which gets a big pop. He's able to counter a Kane clothesline off the top, selling them back the whole time. 
wasn't expecting that. You just got backdropped onto concrete. Sell the fucking back. And he does. And you start going, whoa, that's not good. Whoa, now I just want to open the window. Come on. Anyone else, any other video maker on YouTube would edit that out. I don't because I want you to see it. <sighs> Snitsky whips Kane into the corner and then pulls him down and does a bow and arrow lock using the ring post as his legs. It's great. I really like that. Ah, and of course, Snitsky is evil, so we get the bear hugging bear hug of doom! Ah, let me know if you like that one, because I only just thought of it. Crowd gets behind Kane as he escapes, chokes on his counter into a body slam, but Kane sits up each time, getting a pop. Sorry, three times each time getting a pop. Does do a, 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 the, the Jason set up, that hasn't been for a while. Ah, outside, Kane is whipped into the snacks. Snitsky gets a chair, but isn't able to use it. Inside, Kane unloads with punches. He gets a sidewalk slam and a big boot, then goes top and hits a flying clothesline. This match stops as Snitsky seems to forget what he's meant to do next. Like, uh, 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 uh. And you can see Kane tell him to do a flapjack on, or a snake eye, sorry, onto the ropes, and that's exactly what he does. Well then, Kane. Snitsky looks absolutely knackered. I think that's the problem we've got here. As Kane wants to choke some, but Snitsky breaks and bites Kane because he's evil. Kane sits up and says, Look, I'm not having that. You can do whatever you want to me, but biting me? No. Tombstone City for you, sunshine. And that gets the win at 11 38. This match was better than the Taboo Tuesday match, but not a great not a great deal match. I think I gave the match at Taboo Tuesday one star, and this is what a one and a half. It was on its way towards two stars. There was some decent psychology and decent silence in there, but then I think um He's literally to work on his cardio because by the seventh minute or so he was absolutely fucked and started making mistakes and there were big mistakes. So I can't rate any higher than that. And of course, now that Snitsky has lost to Kane, he served his purpose. He was brought in to feud with Kane. So it's all downhill from here. It really is. Unlucky Snitsky. You won't be anything of note, anything of note that's memorable for the rest of your WWE career. That's unfortunate, isn't it? <laughs> Ah, uh, we get a trailer for the Rise and Fall of ECW DVD. It looks fucking awful. If I'm, no, it doesn't. It looks really good. It's still one of the best DVDs that I own. Then, some divas are at the pool, rubbing suntan lotion onto each other, which is nice. Then, Simon Dean's walking along, sucking on a pineapple, which is nice. And he pushes some guy. He pushes some guy. He pushes some guy into the pool, which is lovely of him. And then, various divas, various wrestlers are in the pool, so they have a chicken fight which lasts for five minutes at least and it's as entertaining as it sounds the good bit is that rosie's there in his superhero in training gear and he has that all on and he wins actually he has christy hemi on his shoulders and they win the chicken fight lovely well done well done so what we all came to see excuse me uh, excuse me Triple H defeating Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho, Randy Orton, Edge and Batista in a superb Elimination Chamber match to win the vacant World Heavyweight Championship. Vacant? What do you mean vacant, Mark? Well, last time we saw Triple H, which was at the Survivor Series, he was the World Champion. You may remember the Survivor Series, the main event, whoever, whichever team won, got control of Raw for a month. The faces won, they got control for a month. Most of the guys, like Maven and um, Orton, no, and Benoit, sorry, just wanted title shots. I am GM, so now for tonight I get a title shot, and they did some other shenanigans and all that, but that's how it went. Un or Randy Orton decided to play it differently. He books Triple H to put the title on the line in a battle royal. Vince McMahon came out and overturned this decision for reasons I don't know why, and instead booked a triple threat match, which was uh, Edge versus Benoit versus Triple H in the match. Benoit tapped Edge out with the crossface, but Edge had rolled through the crossface into a pinning predicament, pinning predicament. So they did the double finish. Next week, Triple H comes out. Well, they fought to a draw. I keep my championship, don't I? But um, Vince McMahon says, "No, no, you don't." Uh, I now declare the title vacant and will let Eric Bischoff, when he comes back from his vacation next week, decide what we're going to do with it. So, a easy e comes back and decides it's going to be a Elimination Chamber match. And Randy Orton, who's never allowed a title shot ever again, don't forget, is um is that yeah you know, is, 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 was that or was that later on? Is that the Rumble that he has his one last title shot? I can't remember. Anyway, Orton's put into the match and all that jazz. They uh, have a beach the clock night on Raw. Whoever gets the fastest um, win. 
is, is the last man to come out of a pod in the chain match. Batista won his match and he's the fastest, and it means he enters. They all won the matches, but he won his fastest. So he enters last. And just in case that isn't enough, some bloke, some guy called Shawn Michaels, is the guest referee. Now, this is the third ever Elimination Chamber match. I gave the one at Survivor Series 2002, the first ever one, of course, where three and a half stars. I gave the SummerSlam match, three, sorry, SummerSlam 2003, sorry, three stars. So, after the build-up package, Hunter confronts Batista about what he said to Orton earlier. Batista said that Hunter and Flair taught him everything, and they taught him never to let your opponent know what you're thinking. And Hunter and Rick seem happy about that. But then... He, Batista follows up with, but if Triple H has been eliminated before I get into the match, I'll be going after the championship. And the look on Rick and Triple H's face is so good. It's priceless. It's wonderful. It's just one of those, ah, slow burn. It's great. <laughs> Out comes Bischoff to explain the rules of the match. And then Jim Ross on commentary explains the rules of the match. And then Lillian Garcia explains the rules of the match. Time from the bell of the last match to the opener, sorry, to the bell of this one is 16 minutes. The entrances take 10 minutes, obviously, because there's six or seven of them. So, you know, they take a farewell. So, shall we go through it? Because I like this match. I've got lots of notes. So, Jericho and Ben, actually, I've broken it into paragraphs, so it, it should flow a little bit better. Jericho, instead of just being notes, you know, Jericho and Benoit start us off. They do some lovely stuff on the mat until Benoit pops the crowd with some nasty chops. He wants the sharpshooter, but he's countered into a Walls of Jericho attempt, which in turn is countered into a German suplex. They trade submission attempts again, but Jericho gets two off a flying forearm, then connects with a high back suplex. The fans like this so much that they chant for Shawn Michaels, but soon stop when the chopping starts again so fuck chat hbk hb woo! <laughs> superplex by benoit and the 10 count appears uh, fans count down the 10 count in spanish which i really like and the first pod opens to reveal triple h hunter whips benoit into the corner real fucking hard and then scores with the knee on jericho who retaliates with chops we go out to the outside where benoit is whipped into the change which quite rightly busts him open something that's missing from this sort of match in this day and age is the blood if you get whipped headfirst into a chain you should bust open it's just that simple that's just simple as that hunter likes what he sees so he does it again pedigree is counted as is one on jericho that means hunter is backdropped onto the outside jericho and catapults hunter into the outside each landing sounds nasty onto that grating that they have on the outside you know jericho flips off ben on Batista, which makes me smile and then gets a suplex for two benoit gets the next entrance and we get the 10 count and our next entrance is edge Edge cleans house with cut spears in the corner, then an execution on Hunter for the two. And we get a lovely little bit of storytelling as the look that he gives Shawn Michaels when it's when it's like that should have been three is so good. Um, anyway, he then hits a high belly spell suplex on Benoit and a back body drop on Hunter. Kitchen sink by Jericho on Benoit. Y2J is whipped into the chain by Edge, which busts him open as well. Hunter wants a pedigree, but lays countered into the chain, busting Triple H's nose open. Edge goes up top and hits a shoulder block on Benoit. Benoit wants the cross face, but is countered when Edge rakes the open wound, which is fucking great. <laughs> and then Jericho gets an interior on Edge. Sing it loud, sing it proud. The quad ripping spine muster of doom! Ah! For Jericho, who gets two. Benoit gets a Northern Light Supers on Edge for two, a pedigree on for Jericho, but no cover, and here is Orton! He unloads on Hunter as the fans chant for the RKO. He gets a nice power slam on Hunter, but then an RKO on Jericho. He wants one on Benoit, but it's countered into a crossface. In a great touch, Hunt oh, this is wonderful. You've got the crossface, sorry, you've got, yeah, you've got the crossface on Orton. And Hunter, instead of breaking it, he's a heel. He does what you just would do him. Just sets a line on the floor, just marking on. Are you going to tap on? Are you going to tap on? Are you going to tap on? And Benoit sat there, but I think about well, the crossface. I'm just like, oh, I'm not having this. Sort of Launches Orton off. He's a baby face as well. I'm going to get you instead of us a short here on Triple H. Ha <laughs> ha okay, for Benoit. Edge wants the spear but misses and hits Michaels instead. Oh dear. Spear for Orton but there's no referee. Edge pulls Shawn Michaels up and slaps him. So Shawn Michaels. It's like, it's like, Shawn's like, oh, oh. 
oh, 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 it's all taken out from the spear. Edge stops him, and it's like the sock goes, ah, yeah, bang, and it's the sweet chin. <laughs> oh, this match is great. Ah, oh, sweet chin music, like I say, Lion Sold by Jericho, that eliminates Edge to a thunderous pop. Amazing moment. Pedigree on Jericho is counted as Benoit comes up behind and Germans him. Can you imagine that? Yeah, pedigree position, pedigree, pedigree, pedigree. I'm going to pedigree and as he goes to jump up, Benoit comes behind and grabs him around the waist and Germans him. <laughs> oh, shit me. Um, Benoit then is on a bit of a roll, so he goes up to the top and wants to dive in the headbutt, then changes his mind and goes to the very top of the pod and hits a perfect fucking swan dive, uh, dive in headbutt. That looks Fantastic. Jericho locks on the walls on Hunter while Benoit puts on the crossface. <laughs> it's good shit, but wait. The 10 count is unnecessary. We know who's going to be the last one out. It's going to be Batista. The refs can't get the chain broken, which is funny. So he's trapped inside. When he eventually gets out, he leaps over the ropes one hand and destroys everyone that isn't Triple H. Crowd chant his name as he spine busters Orton, then has a stare down with Hunter, but the two Chrises can attack them both before anything can happen physically. So Hunter goes back to the ass whooping. In a nice spot, Jericho is press slammed onto a cameraman on the outside, but we see it from the cameraman's point of view, like he's holding his camera. You just see his body come flying at you. That looks brilliant. I really like that. I probably shouldn't, but I love it. Power slam for Benoit by Batista, who then chokes Orson until Benoit breaks it for reasons. I don't understand why these people are breaking the covers, I don't, or the counts, or the chokes, or anything, submissions. I don't get it. Don't understand. He's my friend. I will help him. It's like, no, you want to win the championship. Be friends with him tomorrow night. <sighs> anyway. Now, where is it? Because reasons. There we go. We see a replay of the cameraman. He is knocked. Yeah, Jericho is launched at him, and then the, the momentum of it slams him into the cage. It's a, it's a double whammy bump. Nasty stuff. The chamber is open, so the referees can tend to the cameraman. Ah. Into the home straight now. It's Hunter and Orton got it on the outside, but Jericho appears out of nowhere with a bulldog onto the grating, busting Triple H open because he remember he busted his nose open. Now his head's busting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all blood everywhere. Batista chokes Benoit, who fights back with chops, but walks into a spine buster, and then Batista spine busters Jericho onto Batista. That's enough to eliminate Batista uh, Benoit. Sorry, at 26 minutes and 15 seconds, power slam and a Batista bomb for Jericho and el eliminates eliminates him a minute later. Hunter gives him the thumbs up, then his back body drops onto the outside by Orson. Jim Ross, a nice bit of nice little touch of commentary, says, I will be amazed if Batista doesn't win the championship tonight. The Evolution stalemates destroy Orton. Slowly, Batista contacts with connect, sorry, with a power slam and a spine buster, but Orton kicks out at them both. Orton wants to RKO Hunter, but it's countered. Batista wants to drop the bomb, but Orton goes low, hits an RKO. And Batista to eliminate at 32 minutes and 32 seconds exactly. But wait, it's not just that. You see on the replay that Hunter in the corner was sort of selling in the corner. And he looked like he was, went to pull himself up to help his evolution stable mate. But as he got about halfway up, he just went, ah, fuck it, and fought back down again. But then he makes a miraculous recovery. As soon as Batista's up, as soon as he's been eliminated, he's up and he's battering, sorry, Hunter's up and he's battering Orton. Nice storytelling. It's good. You could have helped me, but you chose not to. Yes. Ah, some true. Yeah, Orton bounces Hunter off the chains and hits an RKO, but Ric Flair somehow gets into the cage because I assume it's been shut again now that they've sorted the camera out. Shawn Michaels gets rid of him, but allows Batista to attack Orton with a truly huge clothesline and a pedigree by Hunter gets the win at 34 minutes and 55 seconds, and it's one of those. Who else could win this match? Hunter needs to be champion going into WrestleMania. So, unfortunately, it may be stupid that they took the belt off him to put it back onto him, but it does make sense. This is the best elimination chamber match to this point, in my opinion. Absolutely loved it. Hot crowd, decent length, obviously. Loads of blood, because it was only Batista who didn't get busted open. I think Orton may not. So at least four of the men were busted open in there. It advances the storyline between Edge and Shawn Michaels. It advances the storyline between Batista and Triple H. That I fucking love if nothing else um yeah i really enjoyed this match i'm happy to go four stars if you wanted to go higher than that go four and a half happy days don't think i can go with the full beans though but yeah it is a truly great match but one match does not make a good pay-per-view does it the opener is decent it's a decent tag match but it's not a oh you must see this match kind of match the undercard is 
rubbish. It's not offensive. Oh, no, actually, no, it is because there's the one. There's Hassan versus Jerry Lawler is minus one, so it's one of those. Fuck it. And I said no. I put one star there. That's weird. I went minus one before, but it says one star on the bottom. That makes sense, doesn't it? For reasons I must have changed my mind in between. Anyway, um, yeah. The main event is must see. The rest of it isn't. I think two out of ten seems actually quite generous because that's what we gave. Like Bad Blood ninety seven, we gave two out of ten because one and one of the one of the of the two was for the Hell in a Cell match. So we'll do that the same here. We'll go two out of ten, and the majority of that is for the main event. It's not a great show. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this has been New Year's Revolution. Next up, like I say, we're gonna do Final Resolution from TNA. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're on Twitter or on Facebook, share this uh, video out for me. That'd be great. And uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button. Leave me a lovely comment down below. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Facebook page. I've been Mark P. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Take it easy, guys.